Hi, my name is Himanshu Soni. I'm a senior program manager in the modern authentication team in Windows Security and Identity. My team owns passwordless authentication on Windows platform. Today, we're going to talk about one such method, which is biometrics, or fingerprints to be more specific. When most people talk about biometrics or fingerprints, they think about crime scene investigative agencies like you see in real life or in the movies. Um, you think about um, access to highly secure buildings and offices and labs, or you think about securing access to high importance, high security information systems. Most of us don't think about biometrics as something that the average user, um, the home user or a consumer can leverage for authenticate authenticating themselves uh, when they interact with digital systems. Today, we're going to try to change that perception. We'll show how easy it is for biometrics to be integrated into an average consumer's digital life. We'll show how, we'll show how operating system and applications can leverage fingerprint-based authentication to authenticate users instead of passwords. Typically, when people authenticate um, to computer systems or applications, uh, they do that by entering a password um, on a keyboard. Um, we all know the common problems with passwords. Um, they get um, shoulder surfed. Uh, so for example, my kid at home uh, has managed to shoulder surf all of my passwords that she needs to get her stuff. So if she wants to play games, she knows how to log on to my PC. Um, passwords are extremely cumbersome to type on touch devices, you know, especially when they're complex passwords. Uh, it, it's, it's very time consuming, very error prone. Um, and to get around that, sometimes users select weak passwords that have their own problems because they can be guessed easily, or sometimes people save passwords on the system. When they save passwords on the system, then it becomes difficult to casually share the device. So for example, if you save your password on the system and your kid, again, gets an access to your device, the kid can log in as you and do things uh, that you don't approve your kid of doing. Fingerprints is a new way of authenticating they can offer a solution to problems most commonly associated with passwords. They're very convenient to use. You simply swipe a finger or tap your finger on a touch sensor uh, to authenticate. We'll use a touch sensor for a demo later on and you'll see how easy it is to use those. Especially on touch devices where it's hard to enter a username and a password, simply tapping your finger on the fingerprint reader um, offers a very fast, fluid, and convenient experience to the user. In most cases, when you're using fingerprints, you don't even have to enter your username. The computer systems can identify your username and password, um, and you don't have to type anything on the computer. They're also getting very cheaper day by day. Tens of millions of devices already ship with fingerprint sensors today. Uh, with more and more scenarios leveraging fingerprint authentication, we expect that fingerprint readers will become a norm on uh, modern computing devices. It is also a very standardized and mature technology with a very long history. It has a very low false rejection rate. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, and above all, fingerprint technology offers the best of both worlds, usability and security. This is one case where usability does not come at the cost of security. Um, fingerprint, reader, fingerprint scans cannot be shoulder surfed. Even if somebody is looking over your shoulder as you put your finger on the fingerprint sensor, they cannot use that information to authenticate as you uh, because they need to have you put your finger on the sensor. Fingerprint readers also have a very low false acceptance rate. Uh, what I mean by that is that when a, a, a different person tries to authenticate as you by putting his or her finger on the fingerprint sensor, um, the, the computer system will reject that fingerprint. And um, also, unlike you've seen a lot of movies and, Holly, uh, and TV episodes where they use fake fingers to, be, to defeat the system, most modern fingerprint sensors have highly advanced techniques deployed to defeat those attacks and identify fake fingers uh, from real ones. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. In continuation to the points I was making before, we've done a few usability studies. And you've seen that people love the idea of using fingerprints to um, um, uh, authenticate instead of passwords. They see it as a common fix for the password problem. Uh, it's very quicker to perform. Users love it. Um, and they look at it as uh, something that makes sense when they're trying to do um, an operation that has a high impact. So when you're doing a high-value high value transaction, using fingerprint to authenticate gives the user the feeling of authenticity when, when dealing with a computer system. 
Before we go into details on how Windows um, operating system or Windows-based devices can leverage fingerprint readers, I want to build some context on the basics of fingerprint technology. You can find a lot more about this technology on the internet, but we'll give you a brief overview of this technology. A fingerprint is composed of two parts. Um, there are ridges and valleys. So when you rub your finger against each other, you feel, you feel the roughness. That's because of the ridges and the valleys. The ridges are the raised areas uh, of your skin, and the valleys are the, the lower areas of the skin between the ridges. Together, the ridges and valleys uh, make two kinds of features. Global features, um, these are too generic for identification purposes. They're often used to bucketize uh, fingerprints in databases like the AFIS. And there are local features, uh, also called minutia. They provide very detailed view of your finger, and they're the basis for um, authentication on most uh, computing devices. Here is an example of some global um, fingerprint features. So you have loops. Um, these are lines that enter and exit on the same side. Then you have whirls. That, that, these are the circles that do not exit the, the print. Then you have arches. that um, These are lines that enter on one side, um, uh, rise, and then exit on the other side. Uh, when you see someone using a magnifying glass and comparing fingerprints, they're looking at global features like these to match fingerprints against um, um, a known sample. Um, the local fingerprint features of the minutia, uh, these are very minute, uh, very small details in the fingerprint. Uh, you have ridges that end, like you see on the slide. You have ridges that bifurcate. You have ridges that cross over. Uh, you have delta patterns and pore patterns. Typically, they're about 50 to 200 uh, minutias per fingerprint, the more the better. Each minutia has certain attributes. Uh, there is a type, like it's a ridge end or a ridge bifurcation. There is a position in the fingerprint, and then there is the orientation. So here you see a very high level overview of how a computing device processes fingerprints. So we start with a raw image of a fingerprint. This is typically a 3D image of a fingerprint. Um, it is converted into a binary format. Um, from where the computing system takes it and removes all the extra information that is not relevant to identify the user. It then identifies the minutia on the fingerprint uh, to create a pattern or, or a unique representation of a finger. So um, how does fingerprint identification work? So we start with uh, in a computing device, a user um, enrolling or, or, or giving samples of the fingerprint to the computing device. So you um, start with the enrollment process where the user gives one or more samples of his or her finger to the fingerprint sensor. The computing device extracts features like the local minutia that I talked about before from the fingerprint, and it builds a template out of that. It's a digital representation of the fingerprint sample. The actual fingerprint sample is not stored on the computing device. It's always a, a digital interpretation of the, of the fingerprint. It's sort of a one-way hash of the fingerprint. So you cannot get a fingerprint sample out of that, that hash. Typically, during enrollment, the user provides a few samples. One is not enough. You provide more than one. And that builds a, a database of um, unique representations of the fingerprint. And we call, it, we call them templates. And they get stored in a template storage. So once the user has enrolled, then during identification, um, um, we start with an unknown user who provides a sample of a finger. Um, the computing device extracts features of that, out of that fingerprint sample, and then it matches them against the database of templates. If it finds a match, then it can identify the user. And if it doesn't find the match, it can reject that user. So this is how basically fingerprint identification work in a um, lot of computing devices. Um, I talked about uh, earlier about fake finger detection. So like, how does anti-spoofing work on fingerprints? You, you heard a lot about these, a lot of Hollywood movies, a lot of movies, a lot of TV episodes show how easy it is to, to defeat this technology. In reality, that's not the case. Um, there are two types of attacks that these, uh, this technology is susceptible to. There is a replay attack. This is where an attacker injects a previously captured uh, fingerprint signal sample into a processing pipeline. Um, and typically, the mitigation for these attacks require secure channel between the host and the sensor. Um, you can also use nonces, timestamps, to guarantee that the sample that the user has provided is, 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 is fresh. Uh, for the fake finger attacks, this is where an attacker creates a fake replica of the finger 
Um, it re usually requires cooperation from the user. So you know, you see, user um, leaves a fingerprint on, 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 a, on a glass. The attacker lifts that fingerprint and creates a fake finger out of that. Um, most finger, modern fingerprint sensors use advanced techniques to, to detect those. They, they, they use technologies like um, radio, acoustic, or optical frequencies to, um, to, to get an image of the skin uh, of the finger. They look for warmth uh, on the finger. They look for blood flow patterns. Uh, they look for moisture levels. So fake fingers have different patterns for moistures. Uh, they look for a presence of sweat from the pores. Um, and they look for um, non-uniform deformation patterns uh, of ridges and pores. So fake fingers have a different pattern than a real finger. This is still an open area research, but, but the industry has advanced quite a lot, and um, it's not as easy as they show in the movies or in TV episodes to, uh, to create fake fingers and use them to identify users in digital systems. Fingerprint technology has been used on Windows-based systems since the days of Windows XP. In Windows 7, Microsoft made a very serious investment in this area and introduced the Windows Biometric Framework, which went through a few enhancements during Windows 8. Uh, but still, pretty much the only thing you could do with fingerprints on those two systems was log on to the PC with your fingerprint. So instead of entering your password when you sign on to your PC or log on to your PC, you would swipe your finger on the fingerprint scanner or tap it if it's a touch sensor. Um, you could also do USC elevation, but that's, that was an enthusiast scenario. In Windows 8.1, we took the framework further. We introduced an inbox fingerprint registration experience, which is integrated with the account settings page. We'll give a demo of that a little bit later. Um, as I mentioned, you can sign on to the device using fingerprints. Um, um, uh, its fingerprints are now available as alternative to many password prompts in core Windows experiences. Um, when you're doing um, app purchases through the Windows Store, instead of entering your password, you can now use fingerprints to authenticate. Um, similarly, when you're doing an in-app purchase, so when, let's, say, let's say you have a drawing app um, that lets you buy stencils or templates within the app itself, you can use fingerprints to authenticate the user instead of a password. Um, similarly, you can use fingerprints to buy music. Uh, you can buy, use fingerprints to buy videos. So as you can see, a lot of meaningful scenarios out of the box now leverage fingerprint-based authentication. Uh, we've also exposed simple APIs for your, for, for, you, for your apps to use the same experience. So instead of using passwords to authenticate, you can use fingerprints. And we'll talk about those APIs and experiences a little bit later. But first, I want to give you a demo of these core Windows 8.1 experiences, the out-of-the-box experiences, uh, to show you how convenient and how easy it is for the user to use fingerprints. So we'll start with demonstrating how a user enrolls or registers for fingerprint sign-on to a PC. Um, there are a couple of ways to do it. Uh, the, the, the easiest one that I find is um, to go to account settings page. So I click on my tile here, click change account picture, and then I see the accounts options. I select the sign-in options, and here I'd see uh, different sign-in options that are, that are available to the user. So you see there's a fingerprint option. So there's a fingerprint scanner on the machine with the drivers installed, you would see that option. So I click on the add button, so first, it'll ask me to enter my password for this PC. So I enter my password. Then, um, as we talked about it earlier, during the enrollment phase, you have to give a few samples. So here, the Windows system is asking me to provide a few samples of my finger. So I'm going to tap my finger on the fingerprint sensor, and it advances to the next. So it's asking me for, for uh, a few more samples. I'm going to do it one more time. So, and it's done. So normally, um, you know, though you saw in the screen that they, it was asking for four samples, but um, if the fingerprint sensor gets enough quality data in, in, in less number of samples, then it, it, it creates that enrollment for you without having to give uh, many more samples. So now we're going to click on the Finish button. And uh, at this point, the user has enrolled for fingerprint sign-on. So now we have registered our finger for the fingerprint sign-on. Um, I'm at my um, lock screen, um, and typically I would, to log on to my PC, I would dismiss the lock, this lock screen and enter, enter my password. But because I have a note for fingerprint sign-on, I can simply tap my finger on the fingerprint sensor and uh, get to my start screen. So I'm going to do it once here, and you see how quick it was. I was able to quickly sign on to my PC by just putting my finger on the fingerprint scanner. So 
other than signing on to the PC, as I mentioned before, there are other scenarios that can uh, leverage fingerprint-based authentication. Uh, I'm going to show one more of them here, which is when you're buying an app from the Windows Store, you typically have to enter a password to authenticate. Um, um, it, it's cumbersome. It, it's it's time-consuming. It's error-prone. You, you have to type in a password. Um, if you select a weak password again, people can guess it. If you save your password on the system, then anybody who gets access to your logged-on session can buy apps on your behalf. Fingerprint um, can help us solve that problem. Um, they offer a very fast and fluid and very convenient way for you to authorize app purchases without having to interact with the keyboard or having to enter a complex password. So here in my demo, I'm going to launch the store. And um, navigate to an app um, that I want to buy. So here, for example, I want to buy the Fruit Ninja app. Uh, and I click on it. Um, I look at the app. If, um, for example, this was my kid ex um, trying to buy an app on my logged on session, when they click on the Buy button, um, a Windows will prompt for a, a, a fingerprint scan. So if my kid puts her finger on the fingerprint scanner, Windows will reject it. So I'm going to um, try that. I'm going to put my finger on the fingerprint scanner, the wrong finger, and it immediately tells me that um, the match was not found. But when I put the right finger, so let's say it was me trying to buy the app, and I put my finger, my and lower finger on the fingerprint scanner, um, uh, Windows immediately um, authenticates me, and it uh, uh, installs the app uh, on my behalf. So as you can see on the top right corner of your screen, it says uh, Windows installing the, the Fruit Ninja, Ninja app. So we've talked about the fingerprint-based authentication, the technology, how fingerprint-based identification systems work. We've given you a few cool demos of how fingerprints can be used to authenticate users uh, for um, common scenarios out of the box on Windows. Uh, before we go into how apps can use fingerprints, I want to briefly talk about the Windows Biometric Framework. It's very important for us to understand how the framework works because that will help you uh, in uh, um, identifying and developing um, uh, and selecting the right architecture for your apps. So in this slide, we'll go through various components in the Windows Biometric Framework. We'll have uh, this color-coded scheme where you know, different colors uh, 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 tell us what component is provided by what um, uh, party. So we start with the fingerprint sensor. This is typically provi provided by a hardware manufacturer, so you find it embedded on your, on your laptop or on your, uh, on your uh, computing device. On top of that, um, there, is, uh, there are some system components. The first one of them is the Windows Biometric Device Interface Driver, or the WBDI driver. This is a driver that talks to the fingerprint sensor. This is the driver that sends iOctals to the sensor. On top of that, there are three adapters. There is the storage adapter, um, which is responsible for storing and retrieving fingerprint templates. Um, then there is the engine adapter, which is the main engine, so as to say. This is the adapter where all the matching happens. In some advanced sensors, this matching is done on the chip itself, on the, on the, on the fing fingerprint sensor itself. And then we have a sensor adapter. Um, that um, So the engine adapter uses the storage and the sensor adapter to interact with the, the sensor. On top of that, we have the Windows Biometric Service. Um, so these are all system level components. Um, you're probably wondering how complex could your app be? How you know how how what's the logic that you have to use to interact with the with the fingerprint sensor? Because looking at this, you may feel that it's um, it, it's very complicated. You have to talk to the sensor, but it's not it's not the case. On top of the Windows Biometric Service, we have the Win Windows Biometric Client API or the WinBio DLL. Um, this is the client API that applications use to talk to the sensor. So you have the fingerprint enrollment application, the one that we use to enroll the user for fingerprint sign-on. That's an application that calls the Windows Biometric Client API. Um, the Biometric Credential Provider, this is the component that is used to sign on to the PC using fingerprints or when you're buying an app from the App Store, the component that prompted, prompted uh, the user for the fingerprint um, uh, scan. That's a biometric credential provider. That's another component that uses the Windows Biometric Client API. Um, you have Win32 applications that use this API. Um, and then Windows 8.1, uh, we added um, uh, Windows Biometric APIs to the Windows Runtime. 
So your store, Windows Store app, you can simply call simple APIs in the Windows runtime to interact with the sensor. So you don't have to um, worry about talking to the sensor or the adapters or the service or the client API directly. You simply call two simple APIs and um, interact um, uh, and, and use fingerprint authentication for your apps. Um, so why are fingerprints important for your app? So we've talked about how uh, core OS scenarios can leverage it. Uh, we've talked about um, the fingerprint technology, but um, why should you consider um, adding this to your app? Why should you consider adopting fingerprint-based authentication in your app? First of all, it makes your app stand apart. Um, Users want a very fast and fluid experience that uses their devices to the full of its capability. If the device has a fingerprint scanner, user wants to make the most out of it. I've talked about it a lot before. Entering passwords is very frustrating for the user. It's time consuming on touch devices. It's error prone. You get it wrong, you have to type it again. Especially complex passwords are painful to enter on touch devices. And there's additional burden on the user to remember many passwords. Um, Devices get casually shared between friends and family. Um, you know, so if you if you if if you have a user that decides to save a password on the system because it's time consuming and error prone to enter it on a touch device, then when that device gets shared with the friends and family, the user's privacy is at risk. Um, you know, if a friend visits me at my house and wants to borrow my um, tablet to quickly check his Facebook page, um, you know, if I have my apps that have my passwords stored, then um, my friend can accidentally launch one of those apps and look at the stuff that I've been doing. You know, I may not want my friends or my family fr or my family to look at some of the stuff um, that um, I want to keep private from them. This may be my work-related stuff or some other work in progress that I've been doing. So privacy is very important to users. So this is why you should consider using fingerprint-based authentication because it allows the user to use an authentic gesture, a, a, a fingerprint-based gesture that nobody else can provide. So it's a fast and fluid experience minus the hassle of using passwords. So how does your app use fingerprints? It's a simple two-step process. We, we really made it very simple. Um, there are two APIs. You call one API to check the fingerprint authentication capability on the device. So this API checks if there is a fingerprint sensor on the PC and it's functioning. So if the driver is installed or, or not, if the driver is not installed, then there's no functioning fingerprint sensor. And it also checks if the user has registered for fingerprint sign-in. If those conditions are met, the API um, um, tells the, the, call, the, 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 uh, the caller that the uh, device is capable of fingerprint-based based authentication. And then runtime, uh, you can use fingerprint to request verification. So the API, um, allows your app to determine if the logged on user is the one who's interacting with the app. So you can call a simple API that uh, uh, requests the operating system to request the, 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 the user interacting with the system to provide a fingerprint scan. And if that scan matches the one that is registered for the logged on user, the operating system tells the app that yes, the logged on user is interacting with the app. Um, so for example, um, you know, if it was um, um, an app that my kid launched on my tablet and the, if the app requested a fingerprint scan and, and my kid um, provided her a fingerprint sample, then the app would not find a match. The, the, the operating system would say that the logged on user did not provide the sample. So the app can, in that case, deny access to certain content on the app to my kid. So what scenarios does it make sense for? Um, uh, quick sign-on is, is uh, one example. So when you have apps that use username and passwords to identify and authenticate users uh, on launch or, or when performing high-impact activity or like high-value transactions, you can use uh, fingerprint instead of passwords. Uh, shopping apps that uh, allow users to buy stuff, um, subscription service apps. These are some examples. There are a lot more examples. But what I'm trying to say here is that you know, any app that requires a user to enter a password before a high-value transaction you can use a fingerprint-based authentication instead of a password. Uh, so one suggested architecture for this is that on each password prompt, the app can detect whether there's fingerprint capability on the, on the device uh, and present the user an option to use it for subsequent sign-on. Uh, so if the user agrees to that, then the app can save the user's password that the user actually entered before in the credential locker. And when the, 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 the app wants to use that credential from the credential locker, 
the app can prompt the user for a fingerprint scan before reading the credential. So if somebody else provided that scan, the app can refuse to read the, the credential from the credential locker and um, not allow that person to um, sign on to the app. So that's one example that's quick sign on using fingerprints in your app. So similarly, like similar to how we did the sign on to the PC, you could have a similar experience for your app. Um, another um, scenario is user consent. This is where um, apps that may not necessarily have username and passwords, but still have local content that the, they let users to create, such as photos, drawings, music, so videos. Um, these apps um, can use fingerprint-based consent. Um, you can have line of business apps um, that run on consumer devices. So for example, if it's a line of business app um, that is installed on a consumer device that um, um, you want to make sure that nobody else in the home uh, accidentally launches and looks at content, you can use fingerprint-based authentication. So for example, if it's a mail app, um, you know, when the mail app launches, it can, ask a requ it can request a logged on user to provide a fingerprint scan. And if the logged on user doesn't provide that scan, the app can refuse to launch. Um, you can use it for additional check for high value transactions. Um, we'll see that in a quick demo later on. Um, you can use it for app resume. So when an app goes through uh, a process lifecycle um, where it gets suspended and then later on it resumes, instead of asking the user for a password, you can ask the user for a fingerprint scan. Uh, so that way, you know, if somebody else um, gets access to the device and resumes the app, um, the app won't automatically show the content. So the suggested architecture for this is similar to the previous case where the app detects fingerprint capability by calling the WinRT API on first launch and ask the user to confirm to using fingerprints. Um, app can also use, can also offer a configurable setting for the user in the application settings page. And then as you as an app developer, identify the portions of the app that may need user consent via fingerprints. And then once you identify those portions, you call WinRT API, so request fingerprint verification before the high impact or before the high value transaction takes place. So these are the simple APIs. So the namespace is windows.security.credentials.ui. Uh, uh, the name of the class is user consent verifier, and it has two simple methods, check availability and request verification. Check availability is the API that you call to check if the user can be identified using fingerprints. And then you re call request verification to request the operating system to request the logged on user to provide a sample. No additional capabilities are required uh, when calling these APIs in your apps. Now we'll show you a quick demo of how a Windows Store app could use fingerprint-based uh, authentication, uh, similar to how we um, use fingerprint to sign on to the PC and um, buy apps from the App Store. So here is a, a demo app that we prepared for this session. Um, this is a stock trading app. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, when I launch it, it asks me for a username and password. You see there's a checkbox below the password field that says use fingerprint to sign in. Before I do that, I'm gonna just show you the experience. So normally you would have to enter this password on a touch screen. Uh, because this is a stock trading app, the password likely is very complex to type on a touch screen. So here I'm gonna enter a password to log on to this app um, and click on the sign in button. And then um, I, I see my uh, content of my app. And when I click on a button that, uh, that results in a high value transaction, um, the app prompts me for my password again. Um, so this is very cumbersome. I have to type in a password. Um, if I decide to save the password, then the risk is that if somebody else gets access to this app uh, on this logged on session, they can end up selling or doing a high value transaction here. So in this case, they could end up selling um, stock that I don't authorize. So I wanna quickly enter my password uh, to show the experience. So now uh, when I click the okay button, um, uh, the, the transaction occurs. So this is how the experience would be without fingerprint based authentication. So you have to enter the password on a device um, each time you do a high value transaction. Now we'll, we'll select the fingerprint option. So when I launch the app, uh, I enter my password, but this time I select the check, check box that says use fingerprint to sign in. So when I, when I select it, what the app can do is, uh, app can then store this username and password in the credential locker itself. And in the subsequent use, it can ask me for a fingerprint scan and then if I provide the scan, it can then go ahead and read the, 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 the username and password from the credential locker and automatically sign me in. 
So I'm going to sign in. So from now on, whenever I um, launch the app, it will ask me for a fingerprint scan. So for example, I close this app and I relaunch it. Uh, the app's going to ask me for a fingerprint scan. So if somebody else was using this app on my lockdown session, so let's say my friend who was visiting my home or my kid um, launched this app accidentally and um, tried to authenticate, they'll put their fingerprint finger on the fingerprint scanner and, and reject that. But on, if I put my finger on the fingerprint scanner, it'll accept that and log me on. So here, I'm going to tap my finger on the fingerprint scanner and log on to the app. So you can see it was very fast, very convenient experience for me. I didn't have to enter a password. I simply tapped my finger on the fingerprint scanner and logged onto the app. And when I perform any high value transaction like sell all shares, um, the app can again prompt me for my consent. At this point, if the, somebody else provides the fingerprint scan, the app will reject it. But if I provide my fingerprint, for example, when I put my finger on the scanner, it can authorize that transaction. So you can see, instead of entering a password, I was able to do all of these uh, activity is signing onto the app and performing a high value transaction by authenticating with the fingerprint. Fast, fluid, convenient, and secure. Another aspect of fingerprint that you could use in your apps is uh, when the app resumes uh, from sleep. So when the apps go um, um, through process lifecycle management where they are suspended and when they get resumed later on, um, the app has the ability to request the user to provide a fingerprint scan again. So in case where you know the PC goes to sleep and somebody else picks up the PC, wakes it up, and tries using it, the app can say you got to provide a fingerprint sample before the app, uh, before it launches or before it lets you do any any transaction. So we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll wait for this app to go into. We'll we'll, we'll um, go to the start screen and we'll wait for this app to go to uh, to uh, a suspend state. And then when we resume it, we'll show you how the app can prompt the user for a fingerprint scan. So now. Um, the app has gone to a suspend state and we're going to um, resume it and show that the app can request uh, the user for a fingerprint scan again. So when I resume the app, the app detects that it has been uh, resumed from a suspend state and it asks for the logged on user to provide a fingerprint scan. So if the wrong user again provides this fingerprint scan, the app will reject it but if the right user provides a scan, the app would um, accept that and then allow the operation to proceed. So um, this, is, this shows um, how these two simple APIs, and we'll talk about those APIs a little bit later, but this shows how an app could put fingerprints in various flows in the app itself for signing on, for performing high value transactions, and for consent from um, when the app resumes from sleep. So next, I'll show you a few code snippets uh, from the app itself. These are oversimplified to um, highlight the message. So here's a code snippet um, where an app can call Simple API to check availability of the fingerprint um, 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 scanning, uh, fingerprint authentication. So the app calls the check availability async API and it gets a return back. And based on that, on that value, it can decide. Uh, for in this in this example, for example. Um, the app um, shows or hides the control that the user selects to um, um, use fingerprint scanning. And a um, um, little later on, when the app collects the username and password, if the user had provided consent to use fingerprint, um, it can then store the password um, in the credential locker. Here's a quick um, code snippet of the quick sign-on experience again. Uh, the app. Uh, in the, as in the previous case, uh, had detected the fingerprint authentication capability. So, and it had stored the password in the credential locker. So when it needs to use that password, it can request um, uh, the operating system by calling this API, the request verification async API, and it can customize a message. Can, it, can, it can send a custom text message to the API itself, which is displayed to the user to build context around why the user has to uh, provide consent, um, and then based on whether the logged on user uh, 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 provided his fingerprint sample or somebody else did, the app can take the appropriate action. So if the logged on user did provide uh, his sample on the fingerprint scanner, uh, the app can go ahead and retrieve the password from the credential locker and then automatically sign on the user uh, to the backend service. 
So in case you're wondering uh, who are the hardware manufacturers for fingerprint sensors, um, here's a list. This is not a complete list by any means. This is there to show that there are many reputed companies in this space. We have fingerprint cards, FPC. In fact, we use their touch sensor for the demos today. They are one of the largest touch fingerprint sensor suppliers today. We have validity sensors, we have edges tech, we have digital persona. There are many others whose names are not on this list. Um, but again, this is not a complete list. This is there to show you that the ecosystem is very healthy and there are very reputed uh, companies producing fingerprint sensors for Windows-based devices. So to summarize, um, fingerprints, so we've seen that fingerprints offer a secure and easy alternative to passwords. This is one technology where usability does not come at the cost of security. And Microsoft is very serious about this technology. Fingerprints are a key component in our efforts to protect the user from attacks against passwords. You will see more and more scenarios leverage fingerprint authentication in future. And it's about time everybody got serious about um, getting, in, getting rid of the passwords. You can help. With simple APIs, your app can offer the same first-class experience uh, that we offer the, uh, the user out of the box. Um, getting the user used to using fingerprints instead of passwords is a very significant step in the right direction. And we hope with this talk we were able to um, educate you about the use of fingerprint technology on Windows-based systems and how you could use them in your apps. Um, here are a few resources for you. So there is a Windows biometric framework that you can um, uh, read more information about. Um, we have uh, the MSDN documentation for Windows, uh, the WinRT APIs that your store apps can use, the two APIs that I showed before. Uh, they are available online. And there is a link to the sample app. Uh, it may be a little bit different from what I showed here, but the concept is the same. It uses the same two APIs to uh, demonstrate how you could use fingerprints in your apps. Thank you for attending this session.